right, Internet, let's rev it up! Today, I want to talk about science and synchros and how Seto Kaiba used science to invent synchros. Now, Kaiba is one of my favorite supervillains of all time, but occasionally, when I call him that, people have a tendency to... No! <laughs> overreact? You see, for me, Kaiba is a very tragic character. He is one of the most gifted individuals in the history of mankind. He's a prodigy at everything he does, everything he touches turns to gold, and yet, the one thing that matters most to him in the whole world is the one thing that he's not the best at. There is one entirely insignificant part of his life where there is someone that happens to be better than him. It's a game. It is meaningless. Being second to the Pharaoh does not affect him in terms of his fame, his fortune, or the hundreds of products that his billionaire company offers. And yet, it haunts him. In the film Dark Side of Dimensions, we see him give up his own life because he wants one more chance to prove to himself that he really is the very best, like no one ever was. He knows that he's not coming back at the end of that movie. He traveled to the land of the dead with no plan of escape, and we're watching his body unravel as he proceeds into the Pharaoh's court. That is the beautiful tragedy of the Duel Monsters manga, which Darkseid is officially confirmed to be canonical to. And if you're familiar with that original story, you might also be aware of the fact that Kaiba obtained one of his signature Blue Eyes White Dragon cards when the previous owner took his own life. Given Kazuki Takahashi's taste for abstract horror and his propensity for doling out karmic justice, Kaiba dying by his own hands is actually a really appropriate ending for the character's narrative. But, as we all know, the master of the Blue Eyes White Dragon story plays out very differently in the anime. Where the character was absent from the manga following the conclusion of the Battle City arc, Kaiba was present for the ceremonial battle between Yugi and the Pharaoh, and his rivalry with Atem is given closure. And unlike his manga counterpart, that closure allowed him to move on with his life and keep running his billion dollar company. But that isn't necessarily a good thing. The world may very well have been better off if he hadn't been around. You see, Kaiba's not a very complicated guy. He likes, in order, dragons, winning, power, and Mokuba. And if there is one thing that he witnessed over and over again during his years of rivalry with Yugi, it's that the Shadow Games are the road to true power. The man has already built an entire financial empire on the game of Duel Monsters, which he uses in order to gain money, influence, and control. The Shadow Games simply offer him one more avenue towards power. And, more literally, power. Like electricity. In Yu-Gi-Oh! 5Ds, we learn that the Kaiba Corporation began a renewable energy initiative based on a new technology called Momentum, and sought to create a perpetual motion machine using a real-world model called an epicyclic gear train, also known as a planetary gear. Basically, the idea is that you have a network of gears that interconnect with one another in the hope that eventually, they'll build up enough momentum to keep spinning on their own while also generating enough leftover power to be harnessed as electricity. A self-powered power generator. But an epicyclic gear train needs something to get started. A transformer that outputs enough activation force to get the gears turning and up to speed in the first place. And do you know what real-world engineers call that kind of transformer? That's right, a synchro! But before you get too excited, Synchro Monsters aren't the Synchro. They're just a byproduct. The Synchro is actually a subatomic particle called a Yusei Gear, discovered by Dr. No First Name Fudo, who named his discovery after his bouncing baby boy Yusei. These particles bind together with one another at high speeds, forming the hard light gears that run the momentum system. And, believe it or not, that actually solves another problem with the show's science. You see, in the real world, the universe has certain physical limits that keep this kind of technology on the purely theoretical side of existence. For example, even if you could find a synchro capable of getting the gears to spin fast enough and become self-sustaining, the metal that the gears are composed of would break down long before reaching those kinds of speeds. In the show, they get around this by using gears that are made out of hard light, which believe it or not, is a solution that theoretical physicists have proposed to this very problem. A gear made out of light would be significantly less susceptible to the rigors of inertia than the molecules making up a gear made out of ordinary solid elements. 
but you still need something strong enough to kick off the reaction in the first place. And creating enough circular momentum to catch the photons that make up light and hold them together tightly enough to form a gear would require an astronomical amount of power. In fact, there's only one non-theoretical source of power on Earth with a capacity factor high enough to even attempt it, and that is nuclear power. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. So here's the interesting thing about nuclear reactions. They come in a couple of different flavors. The first is fusion, the kind of reaction that powers the sun. This is where two or more nuclei combine, usually by being smashed together hard enough that their atoms are just kind of stuck together. The process of combining atoms in this matter releases a tremendous amount of energy, hence the sun's ability to heat our planet from 93 million miles away. But while fusion reactions have enormous potential capacity, they aren't used for energy production because they're incredibly difficult to reliably achieve, and they aren't very efficient. The fusion summoning mechanic in the game actually demonstrates this concept really well. When Kaiba combines three Blue Eyes White Dragon cards, he doesn't get an ultimate dragon with 9,000 attack points, even though that's the combined attack strength of his dragons. About half of their potential energy is lost in the process. Gathering all three dragons and a polymerization card is a lot of work, and at the end of the day, it results in a monster that's less than the sum of its parts. But there are also fission reactions, which is how modern nuclear reactors on Earth generate power. Rather than slapping atomic particles together, fission is achieved by splitting unstable isotopes. Basically, it's the equivalent of smashing open an atomic piggy bank to release all of the nuclear money within, and the resulting energy loss is fairly minimal. In fact, it's so minimal that the radioactive particles released as a byproduct remain fully intact, and can take more than a thousand years to decay to the point where they no longer pose a threat to human beings. In the meantime, that waste is incredibly dangerous and capable of damaging cells in the body. If the damage is severe, it can even alter the subject on the genetic level, causing mutations to the evolutionary line. And with that last tidbit, we now have everything that we need to prove exactly how Seto Kaiba, genius, billionaire playboy, and colossal misanthropist, invented the technology behind synchro summoning. We know that shortly after Yu-Gi-Oh! GX, Kaiba Corp began working on Project Moment to solve the global energy problem. We know that the perpetual motion model that Moment utilizes can't work within the limits of conventional science, but we also know that Kaiba had access to something outside of conventional science. Dual monsters. Throughout GX, he's busy working on all kinds of weird experiments involving the game. He started a school simply to study the effects of dueling energy on players, and where there just happens to be a lab dedicated to dual monsters related animal experimentation. He also starts researching how to create new dual monster spirits, which we know he succeeded in doing at least twice. First off, we meet the embodiment of narcissism that is the Kaiba Man dual monster spirit, and, more substantially, we later meet the Neospatians, who were created by sending original card designs into space. These experiments led Kaiba to determine that he could use monster spirits as the basis of fission reactions in order to supply Domino City with a limitless amount of electricity. By using his research on creating new monster types to invent the Tuner monster, Kaiba could subject an ordinary monster to a momentum-based fission reaction and harness the energy output as electricity in order to keep the lights on throughout the city. And, just like in an ordinary fission reaction, radioactive byproduct was left behind this time in the form of newly evolved synchro dual monsters, whose potential energy has been released by the reaction, leaving behind a creature that is far superior to the one present at the start of the process. This even makes complete sense within the narrative of 5Ds, where we learn from Iliaster that synchro cards began to affect the evolution of the human race in an aborted future timeline. If we started handing out trading cards that were literally saturated in radioactive particles, you can bet the evolution of our species might look a little bit different too, but apparently that's just a small price to pay because all is fair in card games and war. But before we wrap up this video, there is one tiny detail, one fatal flaw in the process that Kaiba never considered when planning this little venture of his. Inversion. 
Inversion is a theoretical concern in perpetual gearing models that suggests that an unbreakable object, say, a disc made out of hard light, can only spin so fast before getting in its own way. As it spins, it's exerting a certain amount of force on the space ahead of it. But, on a circular track, gears are traveling along the same path that they're putting pressure on. Eventually, it'll move fast enough that it will catch up with its own inertia and smash headlong into it. The force of this unbreakable object meeting the back end of its own unstoppable force suddenly causes the rotation of the gear to invert, spinning in the opposite direction and crashing into its own wake from the other side. In the space of less than a second, the gear would ping pong back and forth between both sides of its own unstoppable momentum, leading the space around it to completely destabilize and creating a chain reaction in which isotopes are suddenly ripped apart left and right leading to a detonation more deadly than the combined yield of the atomic bombs dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki during World War II. And if you're sitting there thinking, hey, that sounds just like Zero Reverse, then good for you, because that is exactly what happened. 200 years after Moment was activated, it finally achieved inversion and wiped out human civilization leading the planet's last survivors to travel back in time in hopes of preventing this whole mistake from ever being built and kicking off the plot of Yu-Gi-Oh! 5Ds. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is why Seto Kaiba is, and forever shall be, Yu-Gi-Oh!'s greatest supervillain. But I will leave you with one parting question to debate in the comments. Do you think that all of this occurred because Kaiba made a genuine mistake in the course of his mission to bring unlimited energy to the entire world? Or do you think he was just trying to make a couple of new blue eyes white dragon cards for his deck? Let me know your thoughts down below in the comments, and let me know what you think of this theory. It was honestly such a trip to put so much research into the physics of this children's show and find out how consistently the writers had actually done their homework. You know, except for the whole magic trading cards thing. The next theory video will be a direct follow-up to this one, where we similarly deduce how Yusei Fudo went about developing Xyz summoning. Then, I promise, I promise, from the bottom of my heart, I promise, the Yu-Gi-Oh! Vrains video will be up after that. So if you want to check those out, I would really appreciate it if you subscribe to the channel. We just crossed 10,000 subscribers this month, and frankly, I'm at a loss for words. When I posted my first Yu-Gi-Oh! video a little more than a year ago, I never imagined that all you duelists would help me take the channel this far. So sincerely, thank you to everyone who has helped make this channel what it is today. There is a lot of exciting content coming your way for the rest of 2021, and I hope to see you there. Everybody stay safe and stay healthy, and I will catch you in the next Yu-Gi-Oh! video. Bye!